أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين بارئ الخلائق أجمعين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيب إله العالمين الذي بعثه الله رحمة للعالمين سيدنا ومولانا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين وأصحابه المنتجبين Respected brothers and sisters, dear viewers, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty, says in the Holy Quran, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, huwa alladhi ba'atha fil ummiyyin rasoolan minhum yatlu alayhim ayatih wa yuzakihim wa yuallimuhum al-kitab wa al-hikmah wa in kanu min qablu lafi dhalalim mubin. آمنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم. Welcome to this new series of short discussions, highlighting and discussing the concept of prophethood and how these messengers and prophets of Allah سبحانه وتعالى are portrayed and depicted in the glorious book, the Quran al-Karim. There are many areas in which we can examine this very important doctrine, this part of the core belief of every Muslim man and woman. As we know that all believers, all Muslims, uh, have the belief or must have the full conviction and acknowledgement and understanding of three main areas, the oneness, in other words, the Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, the concept of prophethood, and finally, the idea that every human being will be resurrected on the Day of Judgment to be held accountable for every deed he or she may have performed. The school of Ahl al-Bayt, in addition to these three core principles, the Aqaid as they are known, also incorporates and believes in the system or the concept of the justice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well as the essential element of al-imamah, the leadership which comes after the belief in prophethood. In this series of talks, the aim is to analyze prophethood in detail, speak about why prophethood is necessary. What is the reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent 124,000 prophets to mankind, as we have in some narrations. Thereafter, we shall examine the concept in detail, the concept of asma or infallibility, and discuss within many uh, short lectures the asma of the prophets in the Quran and bring about the discussion of the individual prophets as they are spoken about in the Holy Quran. Today when we look at the Holy Book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we find 26 prophets of God mentioned and their stories referred to in the Holy Quran for you and I to learn from and to emulate their lives. But at the same time there is a huge misconception and many people when they read some verses and they speak about at least 10 of the prophets in the Quran, they may understand that these prophets did or were part of some mistakes or some sins. The school of Ahl al-Bayt, as well as some other schools within the Islamic religion, have come forward with the understanding of these verses and incumbent upon you and I to understand and fully appreciate the concept of Asma, or as is known as infallibility in the Holy Quran and how we should understand these verses uh, that speaks about prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the first thing we need to discuss is the concept of an or prophethood. Before we uh, begin this examination, let us give one example that a employer in a company is given a task. The task is to go to a inhabitable area, an area where there's nobody actually living there, and to construct a city. A city made out of buildings, shops, 
and anything else that is needed for human beings to live in a community atmosphere. That individual is joined by other fellow members of the, or employees of the company. And the head of the company instructs these individuals to take means of transport, to go to that area, and they give them a instruction manual. The instruction manual talks about how they should be building the city and how to maximize the idea of building all the necessary uh, structures. Once they set out to achieve this, when they reach that area, they look at the instruction manual. The instruction manual, of course, has some areas in which they can understand and others that need interpretation. The effectiveness or the efficiency and how they actually go about doing the, what they have to do depends on their understanding of what the manager or the executive director of the company wants them to do. They know what their ultimate task is to construct and to build that city in order for people to move in and live. Yet the instruction manual for them may not be comprehensible. It's not easily understood. They need someone to explain the instruction manual. They need a guide. They need somebody who is close or who has been trained by the manager or the executive who was the person who has sent them to accomplish this task to clarify everything that they need to achieve. This simple example that applies to our day life and uh, to our day-to-day -day activities brings forward or simplifies the concept of prophethood or an nubuwa. A prophet is an individual, a human being, that is the connection between mankind and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every human being was given by the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala the ability to think by utilizing the power of reasoning and intellect. In other words, we have the aql. And the aql is a huge source and of course of understanding. And it is that that distinguishes us from other creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-aql is the first thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created for human beings. And as the Hadith Qudsi says that awwalu shay'in khalaq Allahu al-aql, the first thing that Allah created was the intellect, the power of reasoning. And Allah says to the aql that through you I shall held, hold the humankind responsible. And through you I shall reward mankind and at the same time through the aql human beings are punished for not utilizing it in the right way. When we are born and we are given this faculty of reasoning, we come to understand that this aql gives us the important recognition and the submission towards believing in the oneness and the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only who should be worshipped. This is known as al-fitra, the innate, inherent nature of a human being to recognize the need to worship. Around us today, we find many people who worship, not necessarily worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the only being who deserves to be worshipped. We find people worshipping all kinds of objects and desires. Some people worshipping things uh, subconsciously, such as wealth, such as this world, such as materialism. At the same time, we find that every human being had, has this desire to worship. And this comes from their innate nature, their fitra. Every person is born with the need to obey and to worship. Yet many people, unfortunately, uh, misunderstand this idea and worship others than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The question that comes to our mind is, what is the purpose of prophets? Why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send 
124,000 prophets anyway. And could not the aql, this intellect that we've, be, we've been just been speaking about, sufficient for us to understand what our duties and our responsibilities in this world and in our lifespan is? Shouldn't the aql be sufficient, as is commonly understood today by some non-believers, some atheists and others, who say, we've got the, our intellect, we can work out everything. Today, science has advanced to an incredible level and standard. The technology is like no other time in history. We are able to uh, speak with each other through different means, and we are able to live in this planet, on this uh, planet Earth, as a small global village. Yet, is the aql capable of giving us what we need in order to achieve the ultimate purpose of our existence in this world? This brings us to another question, which is what is the purpose? What is the goal behind our creation? Why are we here anyway? Many points for reflection when we come to examine the whole idea of prophethood. And it's very important and incumbent for us to discuss these essential elements within the belief in the religion of Islam before going into talking about the concept of prophethood itself. We understand from the Holy Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is not in need of our worship. He doesn't need our submission. The recipients and the beneficiaries of our acts are ourselves. We ourselves will reap the fruits of this obedience and submission. Why? Because the purpose of our creation is to achieve a perfection. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has indeed created you and I in order to reach that goal and everything is moving towards that goal. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Ya ayyuhal insanu innaka kadihun ila rabbika kadhan famulaqi. O oh man, you are gradually progressing towards that goal which is meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after this world. And in this meeting, we are desiring to reach this level of complete righteousness, virtue, and perfection. The question is, how do you and I reach that perfection? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the only means is through the worship of the only beloved. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِعْبُدُونَ Surely, verily, Allah says in the Quran, I have not created the jinn and human beings, save but to worship me. In other words, in order to reach that perfection, and some people understand that the goal of our existence in this world is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What some uh, commentators of the Quran, some Arafa and some other scholars rightly understand from this verse is that worship is the means to achieve the ultimate goal. Worship is a way in which we can reach that desired goal, that level that you and I need to be striving for. Human beings in our daily interactions with each other, in our strives, in our lifespan, we're always seeking to get better. We're always seeking for something that will give us more satisfaction, more happiness, more bliss. And that is, of course, meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is, of course, why we have been sent prophets. Prophets of Allah have been sent to demonstrate, to show us, to clarify, to bring the way in which you and I can reach that desired goal of reaching perfection, of understanding what is expected from all of us in this world. Think about it this way, that the aql or the intellect is able to rationalize or come to the understanding of how we should survive in this world means of sustenance, food, drink, shelter, communication. Yet, the aql and even today in the 21st century has not been able to reach to an understanding 
or is not able to prove about the existence of the metaphysical world, عالم البرزخ, عالم الآخرة, the hereafter, is not able to prove what is it required from mankind when it comes to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as far as seeking his pleasure. What do we need to do in order to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The aql is incapable of reaching this. What we understand is Allah has given every human being the power of the intellect in order for this source to be supplemented by the prophets that he has sent as a source of guidance and salvation for mankind. Therefore, the intellect is known as Ar-Rasul Al-Azghar and the Prophet and the Messenger and Nabi as Ar-Rasul Al-Akbar or the outward Prophet and the Aql is the inward Prophet. Both work synonymously together to help the human being achieve that goal of perfection, of reaching that desirable level that every human, every individual wants to reach. The prophets of God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Holy Quran, they have been sent because of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything in this world has been present and has been created in order for mankind to reach that desirable state in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to reach. The heavens and the earth, the animals and the plants. You look around and you reflect with yourself and you find that everything is available. Everything is being made and created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us. As the Hadith al-Qudsi says, Ya ibn Adam, خَلَقْتُ الْأَشْيَاءَ لِأَجْلِكِ This Hadith al-Qudsi is a statement from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala other than the Qur'an narrated by the Holy Prophet of Islam sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. O mankind, I have created everything for you. وَخَلَقْتُكَ لِأَجْلِي And I have created you for my purpose. In other words, for you to be able to meet me in that desirable state. The discussion will continue inshallah in the next episode. وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على محمد وآله الطيب